I'm Ruth and around six months ago I bought this camper van so I could travel my home country of Scotland after living overseas for 12 years. I've used this van a lot over the past few months in all seasons and I've also done some DIY to make it more comfortable. In this video I'm going to be sharing with you my honest feedback on this van and if it was the right van for me to buy. I've probably spent around 700 nights in vans during my life. I've lived part-time and full-time in vans and I've done two conversions. Before buying this van, I had a fair idea of the type of van I wanted. I plan to use this van for extended trips rather than living in full-time. My main three requirements for the camper van were to be able to stand up inside, fit into a regular parking space, and I wanted one that was already converted. This van is a Toyota Hyus high roof van. And this was my first choice of van and I was actively searching for this make and model of van in the UK. I've always used Japanese vehicles and I find them to be very reliable. I saw this van become available for sale on eBay in Liverpool in England. So the next morning I drove four hours to go and see the van. The van had been used by the Royal Mail before being converted into a camper van by the previous owner. He was a joiner and shortly after completing the conversion he passed away and it was his family and friends who were selling the van. The van pretty much ticked all the boxes I was looking for. The there were a few things I wasn't 100% sure about but I knew that I could do DIY and make those changes myself. I paid £6,600 for the van which I was very happy with. I named the van Ernie after the man who sold it to me. When I got the van the miles on the clock were around 92,000. Now, six months later, it's at around 99,000. So in terms of maintenance over the last six months, back in July, I had the MOT for the van. The MOT is the annual roadworthy check. I know in different countries, it's called different things. Prior to the MOT, I got some welding work done on the rusty steps that I discovered. I had tried to repair those myself, but the garage did a much better job. In June, I changed the oil and the oil filter, which I shared about in a video. However, in September, the oil light came on when I was traveling in a remote part of the north of Scotland. I went into a local garage and they discovered a very small oil leak. I've had it checked out by my local garage and the van will be going back in next week to get repaired. This van is from 2001 and there's always a risk of having some maintenance issues when you buy an older van. I did expect that there would be a few things that would crop up but overall the van is running really well and I'm very happy with it. This is the layout of the interior of the van. There is a kitchen. There's also a desk and sofa area, which then turns into a bed. There's a storage area here at the back. And there's also a space in the entrance area of the van where the fridge used to be. Now I keep the battery in there. In the van, there's more than enough storage for one person. And there's also a vent. The space here between the table and the kitchen is quite narrow and although these handles look nice on the kitchen cupboard they're not very practical. I often catch my leg on them when I'm walking past and I've also injured my head. I knocked my head on it when I was trying to get something out of the cupboard once so I might look at changing over these handles. The bed is really only suitable for one person so you probably could fit to a squeeze but it's not very comfortable. I've done two different trips with friends in the van. On the first trip, one person slept in the bed and one person slept on the van floor. And to be honest, it wasn't a great experience. The van floor is pretty small and pretty narrow. So I won't be doing that again. With another friend, one person slept in the bed inside the van and one person slept in a tent nearby the van. This worked better actually, but for a longer trip, I really feel like this van is better suited just to one person. I found now that in the winter months, the cushions are a little bit damp in the mornings. So when I have an opportunity, I sometimes put them outside just to dry off in the sunlight for a few minutes. The hob for cooking in this van is powered by gas. I'd never used gas before and I made a video sharing my first time using the gas in the camper van. There was already a canister of flow gas inside the van in this cupboard here and last week it actually ran out for the first time and I wasn't very sure how to deal with it and change it over. Luckily I was near a flow gas depot so I headed there and the man helped me change it over to a new canister. The canister that I had inside the cupboard was actually an old model and they've stopped making that size of canister. So the one that was 
put in to replace it is actually slightly bigger and it just fits inside. I don't know how full the previous canister was when I bought the van but it lasted me for around six months so this one should definitely last me for a minimum of six months. I've also bought a carbon monoxide detector and I always open the door when I'm cooking with the gas. So actually only this one works. This one used to work but it's stopped working now so I need to try and get some help to get that fixed. When I first got the van, the water and the tap wasn't hooked up, but Simon, who's helped me with a few DIY projects, helped me get it up and running. So now it's working. However, the way that the van was built, um, this wire actually connects to the vehicle battery. So in order to get power to this tap here, you need to put the key in the ignition of the van and turn it on. To be honest, having to put the key in the ignition every time I want to use the tap is a bit annoying and it's the number one thing I want to change next with the van. One night I brushed my teeth and I forgot to take the key out of the ignition and the next morning I woke up and the vehicle had a dead battery. Luckily I was staying in a campsite that night and the man who was in the pitch next to me, he had a jump starter kit and he helped me restart the van so I could continue on my travels. I feel like there's a risk of this happening again because it's quite easy to forget to remove the key after using the tap. Last month I shared that early next year I plan to go to France in my camper van as there's something I really want to do there. I've been continuing to learn some French in preparation for my trip to France as I always like to know a little bit of the language when I travel to a new country. To learn French I've been using Lingoda, an online language learning platform where you can learn from native speaking teachers. You can choose from English, French, German or Spanish and you can have either individual or group classes with three to four other people. I've been doing the intensive Lingoda Sprint Challenge in group classes to learn French. The Lingoda Sprint Challenge is a two month learning challenge where you take 30 or 60 classes and you can see big progress in your speaking confidence. I've been making some great progress with my French and I've been able to have more conversations with Jean-Paul, the handsome French man in my village. Ruth, comment ça va? Ça fait longtemps. Jean-Paul, tu vas bien? Très bien. Merci. Quand par la train par Glasgow, la train par Glasgow, part à uh, 8 or 5. Merci. Au revoir. Au revoir. If you're interested to learn a language or brush up on your existing language skills, the next Lingoda Sprint Challenge starts on December 27th and you can save 20 euros by using the code RUTH20. I'll leave the link and more information below. For the water in the van, I have a 10 litre fresh water tank, which goes in here beside the gas bottle. And I have a 10 litre gray water tank, which goes in the cupboard beside it. I drink a lot of water every day. I make tea and coffee, and I'm also washing dishes and brushing my teeth. So I find that about 10 litres per day is how much water that I'm getting through. I don't want to have to fill up the water every single day. So I bought another 10 litre tank, which I store inside the sofa storage and I'm also considering getting another 10 litre tank as well. I've used the van in all seasons now. It's a really great van for spring, summer and autumn. There's no heating system in the van, so it does get very cold in the winter months, especially the floors. I really want to continue using this van through the winter months, so I'm looking at installing a diesel heater. When I got this van, it didn't have any toilet and with the lack of public toilets in Scotland, I decided to get a toilet. The toilet that I'm using for my van is a separating toilet from a German company called Trilino. It's been perfect for my van because it's very compact and it doesn't take up much space. And when I'm not using it, I can also store it inside the sofa storage area. I made a full video about the toilet if you'd like to know more. When I got the van, there was already mains hookup installed and sockets inside the van. This van had been designed to take to campsites and there was no 12 volt electricity. I personally like to stay a mix of both campsites and off-grid locations. So I installed a 130 watt flexible solar panel onto the roof of the van and installed a Bluetti AC200 Max portable battery. The portable battery has a huge capacity and it's been great for charging all of my devices. I also attached 
attach these battery powered lights and I'm using rechargeable batteries to power those. In the summer months in Scotland, there's a lot of daylight hours and it's quite easy to generate solar energy. The sunrise in the summer can be around 4 a.m. and the sunset is around 10 p.m. However, now it's winter time, the daylight hours are much shorter. Recently, the sunrise has been around 8.15 a.m. and the sunset's around 3.45 p.m. So it's been much harder to generate solar energy. I need to go to campsites every few days and plug in the van to recharge the Bluetti portable battery. I can charge the Bluetti when I'm driving, but it charges quite slowly. I would need to drive continuously for 24 hours in order to charge the Bluetti from zero to 100%. If I plug in the Bluetti, it takes around four hours to fully recharge. I shared a video a few months ago about Starlink satellite internet. I like to travel to remote parts of Scotland and was finding that sometimes it was a struggle to get network coverage in these places. For the work I'm doing, I need very high speed internet to do video calls and also do large file transfers. So I invested in Starlink. The Starlink comes with a stand which you can place on the ground outside your van. However, there are times that it's not possible to set up the stand. For example, if you're in a car park somewhere. I also had a situation where a dog on a campsite not over the stand and after that I was determined to have the Starlink dish mounted on the roof of the van. I attached the Starlink pivot mount to the roof of my van and also got an extendable ladder which is stored behind the driver's seat. I'm really happy with the pivot mount on the roof of the van but I don't use it on very windy days and in case anyone's wondering I don't drive along with the dish inside I always remove it before I drive. As you can see on the bottom of the Starlink dish gap here and that fits in there's there's a spot here for it to fit in here and it will click once it's get gone in correctly. I will slot the Starlink in. So there'll be the wire here. I'm just showing you without it's been the wire. Yeah, it will come out the top here. So it just slots in like that. If it's windy, it really like shakes the roof. So on windy days, I avoid using it. And then when the Starlink is powered on, it will start to move around to catch the correct signal. So I just make sure this is really tight before I go back down. The two downsides of the Starlink internet are the cost of it and then also the high wattage that it uses. So when I did the test, I think it was using around 75 watts, uh, which is quite a lot. So it can drain the Bluetti battery quite quickly, especially if I leave it on overnight. When I bought the van, there were no curtains or window covers for these three back windows. And in the evening, when the lights are on, people can see in. I probably made those window covers on the hottest day of the year in Scotland, and now it's become colder. The window covers have actually shrunk by quite a few centimeters. So around the edges, there's actually now a small gap and people can see in the windows again. But I'm planning to make the window covers again. Maybe I can have a summer set and a winter set of window covers. When I got the van, it came with a fridge, but it didn't work, so I removed it from the van. 12 volt fridges can be quite expensive, and Scotland generally isn't a very hot country. <sighs> I don't know if you can see that. I also don't really buy meat, fish, or dairy, so I decided to live without a fridge. I feel like for my situation, this space here is better used for the battery, so then I can charge my laptop and camera and make videos to create income, rather than having a fridge so that I can have some cold beers. I've measured all around the van to see if the Bluetti battery would fit somewhere else and the only space is really on the floor of the passenger seat and I usually bring my folding bicycle in that position so this really is the only spot that will fit the Bluetti battery. So when it comes to future things I'd like to change with the van, number one is changing the power source for the tap and the pump. There's the risk of the vehicle battery dying if I forget to remove the key from the ignition, so I'd really like to change that over at some point. I am considering installing a proper 12 volt system in the van, although I need to weigh up the cost of installing a system like that in an older van. If I did install a system like that, I would put it in the back storage cupboard. At the moment, I'm just storing things like hiking boots and small camping gas canisters in there. I've already measured it as well and it's possible to fit certain sizes of batteries and an inverter in there too. I'd like to have a bigger battery system so that I can power the Starlink without any worries. I would also install some 12 volt lights. It also means that I could get a fridge since I will no longer need to use the Bluetti battery and this space will be available. I also want to store more things above the kitchen on the shelf. I'd like to put items up there that I use really often like cups and my coffee maker. At the moment I'm storing them in the cupboard it's quite narrow and awkward to get inside. So I'm thinking to attach some sort of bungee cords along there and then I can store many things there and they won't fall out when I'm driving. 
overall I'm very happy with the van that I decided to purchase. I feel it was a really good van for the price and I'm really enjoying driving it and being able to park it in regular parking spaces. Being able to stand up inside the van also makes such a difference. The best thing about getting this van is it's helped me achieve my goal of being able to travel and see more of my home country of Scotland. Having a camper van in Scotland makes travel much more affordable because the prices of hotels and accommodation can really add up. I hope this video was helpful to those of you who are interested in camper vans. Thank you for watching and see you next time.